and club industry reached out for me to do that talk. And when I asked my employer at the time, could I go? They said, no. Oh man. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm going. So I went, I went, I was supposed to be on lunch break, man. I just didn't come back. And Welcome to the Success Fitness Podcast. I am your host, Christian Evans. This podcast is for adults looking to achieve success in their fitness journey. And our special guest today, Mike Trotter, aka the PT boss from Bloomington, Illinois, will help us do just that when he shares how to best choose a personal trainer that's right for you, why he became a personal trainer, and how to fit working out into your busy schedule. Without further ado, please welcome Mike Trotter, a.k.a. the PT Boss, to the Success Fitness Podcast. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing great, my brother. Thanks for taking the time. Man, I appreciate you coming to this podcast. And I'm going to hop right into it on the importance of the PT Boss being on the Success Fitness Podcast. Back in 2017, when I first started personal training, we took a day trip up to Chicago and there was this fitness conference that I had no clue what I was really walking into. That was like, Hey, you want to go to Chicago today? And I'm like, all right, cool. So we went up there. There were, you know, um, it's kind of like a fit expo type of situation. They were, you know, showcasing the equipment. Um, and also they were doing, you know, speeches or motivational speeches or just like workshops. I think that's the correct name for it. And I walked in there and it's Mike Trotter. Now, as far as for me, personal training was, I was just so green to it. I was just so green to it. I had just recently came off, um, um, you know, losing 187 pounds. And then from there it was association with, Oh, since you lost weight, you can become a personal trainer. Now Mm -hmm. we'll get a little bit more into that. And I really didn't know how that added up to me then, but I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Let me go with it. And listening to Mike watching you first off is another just black man, just point blank period. And in this high prestige position that I viewed it in and I still do. And he was just dropping gems. Mike was just dropping gems. And I remember there were two, I don't know which one was, was at the top, but I just put them together. Right. One was, you said something about when personal trainers are training their clients to not be on their phone so much. How you, I remember you said something about, man, I would, you know, go into gyms or whatever, kind of survey the you know, area. And then there was personal trainers and they'll just be on their, you know, their phone or whatever. It's like, put your phone up. Yeah. I'm like, man, it's, it was like, you got to tell somebody that, you know, that was one. And then two, it's like, man, when you start off um, in your session, you ask your clients, you know, Hey, how you doing today? And they ask you pretty much the same thing. And it was your response. I thought that was so slick is it was, you know, same old, same old. So if they ask you, you know, and say just same old, same old, because it's so much about them. And yep. that has stuck with me. That has stuck yeah. with me to this to this very day. And, yep. you know, when you when we talk about personal training, you know, it's the personal part. It's the personal part um, to where you're diving deep into this other person, you know, they're not a client, you know, they're, they, they are a human being and you get to find out what their motivations are, you know, what makes them tick, what makes them, you know, just, just feel, you know, feel Mm -hmm. like they can do something and they can't do something. A lot of that starts with you as a trainer setting the tone. So I just wanted you to know those words have stuck with me since 2017. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But hopping right to you though, hopping right to you. That was, that was 2017. 2017. I remember that. That that seems like it was just yesterday. Wow. Yeah. 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 It was, um, cause I got hired. It was a, um, I was working at the clubs of river city and it was, um, like a health club. And I, I believe I got hired like that. Matter of fact, that that May, I remember stuff because I had a passing in my family. It was like May. I like legit quit my job that week. My aunt had passed. Yeah. I'm like, I'm done with this place. And then um, I remember maybe like the week before I had got hired there. And I'm like, all right, I already had a backup plan. And I remember maybe about October, November, maybe probably October or something. And it was just so different. It was like, OK, you want to go to Chicago. And I'm like, what? Yeah. So we ended up like driving to Bloomington, get the train, went up there. And 
that's honestly like, I don't even really remember the equipment. I just remember your speech. I remember your yeah. speech and it was your energy. It was your voice. It was your stature. It was your height. And cause it's like, you know, in this fitness business is, you know, you get up on people and they're like five foot five. I'm not, I'm not dissing anybody. It's just, I'm a guy, I'm, I'm like six foot three, you know what yeah. I mean? 300 pounds. And you trying to find somebody who looks like you, yep. you understand what I'm saying? And you were the first person who actually looked like me. Yeah. And I was like, man, let me listen. But it was the cell phone and it was, you know, same old, same old. And Dude. so I appreciate you. And that's, that's, that's honestly been my foundation. And, um, you know, from here on out, as far as, uh, well, from then to now in regards to, to personal training. So I just want to thank Dude, you for that. Go, going back to that, it's so funny, like you bringing that up. I snuck to that seminar. Before I run, I use my secret weapon to maximize my performance, the Breather Fit. Not only does the Breather Fit strengthen my lung capacity, it helps accelerate recovery from my workouts. All it takes is 10 breaths for two sets to maximize performance before my morning runs. Use my code FITBREATHE at checkout to get 20% off. With Breather Fit, you work hard, but breathe easy. Like I was still <laughs> working, like, like, bro, this is, this is when things were like still blowing up for me. Yeah. And I was get I was getting a bigger presence on social media. So I started getting asked to come and do these different things. I, I'll never forget. That was that was club industry. And it was something that I always yeah. wanted to do. And I was still working for a corporate gym at the time. So I was still managing a corporate gym while things were blowing up for me on social media. So I'm still running like a online business uh, as a trainer, but kind of smaller. I'm getting reached out to by different companies to do this and that. And club industry reached out for me to do that talk. And when I asked my employer at the time, could I go? They said, no. Oh man. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm going. So I went, I went, I was supposed to be on lunch break, man. I just didn't come back. And you know, it's so crazy. Like they think I'm at lunch and I'm giving this speech to these people that they said I couldn't go to. And it's, it's crazy because that's how we connected. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. that's how we're here today. And, Me sneaking away and doing that actually gave me confidence to really, you know, start doing it more more and more on my own. And I ended up leaving the corporate setting eventually. But it's crazy how that's where our relationship started. Yeah, that reminds me of those those memes that uh, people put up um, where they show themselves already on the airplane. And it says, this is me <laughs> after I've already uh, put my uh, my request for the job off. It's like they didn't even approve. It's like, regardless if you prove, going. It, or not, prove it or not, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. So how did you get started in the personal training? What was your motivation behind starting to or wanting to become a personal trainer? Yeah. So like a lot of us, man, um, I went to college. And if I'm being 100 percent transparent with you, I went to college to play basketball, you know, and I didn't even go to a big college. I wasn't I wasn't at a famous, you know, prestige school known for basketball. But in my head, I was going to the pros like I was going to be the guy who comes from the small school and makes it right. But I think that that was a blessing for me, because if I didn't have basketball, I wouldn't have cared enough to apply myself in college and make it all, all the way through because to play ball, you have to stay eligible. Right. Right. So that, that kept me tight. So when I get to graduation, I remember sitting at college graduation thinking like, okay, cause I had went to a couple of uh, pro camps and I realized very quickly, you ain't as good as you thought you yeah, was. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, I remember sitting at college graduation, literally like, not knowing what, what was next, you know, because you, you build up this false belief that you're going, it's, it's, it's going this, you know, you're going to go to the pros. Right. And when I look back, you know, hindsight, dude, I had no chance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I not even, you. not even close, but I'm sitting at college graduation and I'm thinking like, well, what's next? And being from the South side of Chicago, all I knew is that I didn't want to go back home. Right. Gotcha. I, I'm like, uh, whatever I decide to do next, it can't be home because I didn't want to be around the same people. I didn't want to be around the same environment. Mm-hmm. I knew to if I was going to thrive, it had to be somewhere else, anywhere else. Right. Right. So in college, I got my exercise science degree. So I'm like, well, I'm going to pursue this. And I've always had a passion for fitness, always had a passion for helping people. Like I was the guy on the team where if you were struggling with something, I was going to stay after practice and help you with it, 
right? Mm-hmm. I was the guy on the team that's going to show up early with you and do it. So like training was always kind of in my nature. So I'm like, well, I got this exercise science degree. I got a passion for fitness. I got a passion for helping people. Training makes sense. Cause if I'm going to have work a job, it's got to be something that I enjoy. So instead of going back to Chicago, I had a couple friends who lived in Bloomington, Illinois, which truthfully, I had never really heard of Bloomington, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right, right, it, right. it was so far outside of my, my world right. that, you know, I was like, cool, well, y'all live here. I'm going to come, you know, stay on the couch with y'all as I pursue this thing and find a job, you know? So, um, so that's what I did. You know, I went from gym to gym looking for to get hired on. And believe it or not, it was hard to get hired. Like, bro, I had an exercise science degree and people were like, it's not enough. You got to also have a certification on top man, of that. Man, that, so, that, that hit me right there, man, because it's like just this idea. So, so 2017. And so when was this when you started looking for, you know, personal training jobs? What What year was this? So I graduated college in May of 07 and I started working that that month. OK, so. Again, I'm fairly new to I was fairly new to all of it, but it did from the outside look so easy, at least far as for Mm -hmm. me. And then alone, I already knew there were people who were more certified than me, more educated than me, probably had a better physique than me at the time. And with all that, so I kind of knew that. And so in my head, again, my perception compared to, you know, your reality of, okay, this should be more easier for somebody like you, but Mm -hmm. to hear that, you know what I mean? It's like, man, you know, things are just tough. You know what I mean? Things things are tough, but continue. It was, it was a lot of, I felt like they were, it was a lot of, uh, you had to jump through a lot of hoops. Right. Yes. And, um, looking back, I have a better understanding of why that is because, you know, of the revolving door of the personal training industry. Like most, most trainers don't make it past six months. Right. Because it's not, it's not easy. We look at it as, okay, I work out, you know, or, you know, I got in yeah. shape. I got, I got myself in shape. How hard can it be to get other people in shape? Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? but, <laughs> but, but as you know, from doing it as long as you've been doing it, it's not the same. Right. So yeah. I remember when I walked into this one specific uh, commercial gym and I was like, you, you ever walked in somewhere? You like, this is the one, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. this is yeah. where I need to yeah. be, right? Yeah. And that's how I felt. I walked in there and I, I walked in and um I talked to the front desk girl and I'm like, hey, I'm I'm Mike Trout. I want to get hired as a trainer. And uh she told me that she would have the manager call me. Well, what I didn't tell you is the other part of this story is I had already got offered a personal training job in Chicago. So yeah. my mother said, Okay, if you don't want to come home, I get it. But you have this amount of time to find something out there. And if you don't, you come at home and get into work. <laughs> right? Yeah. As simple as yeah. that. Yeah. So with that in mind, it wasn't like I'm just kicking it on my homie's couch for a month with no, you know, it's yeah. like sense of urgency. It has yeah. to get, has to get done. Ticking. Yeah. The clock is ticking. So, you know, I go in, talk to the front desk girl, and she's like, the manager will call you. Well, the manager didn't call me that night. So mm-hmm. I went back the next day. Yeah, pull you know up I mean? season. Pull yeah, up I'm, season. I'm, yeah. I'm here. She don't <laughs> yeah. she don't know the, the 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 time constraint I'm under, right? Yeah, right, right. So right. <laughs> same front desk girl is standing there and she's looking at me like, I saw you yesterday. And I approached yeah. her the same way. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, Trout, I'm here to be hired as a personal trainer, as if I didn't see her the, the day before. Right, 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 right. And she said, I'm gonna have the manager call you, right? So I'm not kidding when I tell you this. This process of me coming in, her saying the manager's going to call me, happened for five days in a row. Mm-mm. Literally, <laughs> five Mm-mm. days in a row. And on the fifth day, when I was kind of like, man, this is this is crazy, he finally yeah. called. And, you know, he didn't even offer me a job. He offered me an opportunity to audition for a personal training job, which you had to do this class, and it took two weeks to do this class, and they put you through all this stuff. And then at the end of it, you might get hired. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that's how I got into it. Man, before I dive deeper into that, because everything that you're saying is just all hitting on personal notes. But the NBA finals just finished. And mm-hmm. you have a history of being a basketball star, being a basketball mm-hmm. star. 
What's your favorite NBA team? So you it depend on um the, the, my answer is really going to determine our relationship moving forward. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, it, 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 it really depends. It, re, it really depends, man. I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what? Podcast is over with. So, man, you is, know, don't be political. Just I'll be go, honest. What's your, no. Not even so much between the two, just in general. What's no, your favorite real, real talk. I don't have a favorite team. I'm, I, mm-hmm. I love Chicago because I'm from Chicago. Got but you. I'm a LeBron James fan. So, so simply put, whatever team LeBron mm-hmm. on, yeah, That's right now. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's LA, yeah, 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 yeah. People understand. I've been following LeBron since he's been in high school, and I got so much respect for like his story, right? Yeah. And like to be in the limelight that long and yes. succeed. Yes. Like, yes. Every expectation they put on this man, he's not only accomplished it, but succeeded. Imagine being that famous since you was in eighth grade. Yes. And not, and not mess it up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, see, I'm a Los Angeles Lakers fan from the Shaq and Kobe era. Originally a Chicago fan, but the way they did, Michael, Phil, all of that kind of stuff. I still got bad blood with them from that standpoint. Phil went to L.A., then became an L.A. fan. But prior to that, I was always a Shaq fan. Like, are you a LeBron fan? Just Shaq. Pure dominance, pure destruction. It was fear every time he got the ball down low. It was it was a wrap. But yeah, so we're cool now. The yeah, all right, cool. Can proceed. The interview can proceed. The interview you never know. Can proceed. You never know. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But just with all that, you, like you said, you went to some camps, um, tried out, and you see the, the athleticism, the skill um, of one that you need to have or what you, you already have and had, um, and then the competition around, and then for, like you said, okay, now I, I know a bit about that. And for somebody to been doing that at that high level and the expectation since the eighth grade and yep. where they are right now, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? Salute. You gotta, you, salute. Got to. you gotta salute. But going back to the reason why those stories were, were hitting me so, so tough. And maybe it's because I've been in this game since, you know, 2017 and you see the ups and you see the downs. I would argue to say with all of those hoops that I went through or you went through to get that position, it's like, was it really worth it from the standpoint of the independency that you honestly end up having to develop as a personal trainer? And when you get to a gym or come to a commercial gym, the hoops that they give you or make you go through. And it's like, man, I did all that. You know what I'm saying? For that, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It just puts things in question. I'm not saying that it should be done. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be yeah. done. It just raises a lot of questions. It just raises a lot yep. of questions. Did you feel that way or do you feel that way? You no, know, currently looking back because hindsight is 2020. Yeah. So I look at it like this. It depends on what you do with that after you are faced with these, this adversity or the hoops that they make you jump through, because, you know, it depends on where you want to take it. Right. I'm glad that I went through what I went through because it prepared me to run, run my own thing. Right. Right. It, pre- right. it, it, it prepared me to understand what it takes in order to run a successful personal training business, because there's, there's the personal training side of it, but then it's also mm-hmm. the business side of it. So what I, what I, what I, the understanding that I developed was when it's not yours, the split is not going to favor you. You know what I mean? Yes. And that's, and, yes. and when you look back at it, I mean, at best, I think the split was 70% them, 30% me. Ooh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so like, yeah, you, Oh, that man! Listen, you hitting on everything right you know, there, you, man. You, you running this, you know this. Ooh. You feel like you're running on a rabbit uh, hamster wheel, right? You're yeah. working so hard, yeah. and you got this full schedule, and you like, damn, yeah. this is how much it was. But you know, back then it was just doing it because of the passion for it, right? It was like, man, right. I love this, and I gotta find a way to make something out of it, you know. So, luckily for me, as I was coming up in the personal training game. I was filming everything. 
I always understood the value in recording stuff because mm, I'm a nerd right. when it comes to documentaries. Like I love I seeing you. it behind the scenes, right? Gotcha. So, gotcha. so I was when I'm as I moved up in the ranks and I became the PT manager, my job was to recruit these trainers, bring them in and put them through that same class that I went through, but in my own way and teach them how to be successful out on the training floor. Well, I would film the process, right? I would film me doing that. And I would film me taking these trainers from point A to point B and, you know, showing them how to be successful. And I would, I would post it. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's that's genuinely how I built my social media in the beginning. But because of that, you know, that's how I was able to start my own thing eventually, because yeah. I had the wherewithal to be like, OK, let's video this. And now, the goal was never to video it to get something out of it. I just knew like, OK, maybe this could help some trainers out there who are struggling with figuring out how to be successful in this game, you know, and, you know, Instagram came and. The rest was history. Now, how would you define success in personal training? I think it depends on the person. If you're gotcha. talking about at different points in my life, it was it was different things, right? Um, in the beginning, let's let's be honest. I had rent to pay, you know. Yeah. So as much it was as it was, it's always been about helping people, and it's always been about you know pushing people past the limits that they think they have. But at the end of the day, it can't be success if I can't take care of myself. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. for, for, for me, in the beginning, it's, it was about helping people and it was about taking care of myself. Both of those things had to be happening in order for me to consider it successful. You know, if if I can't pay rent, then I don't consider it success. You know, so um, that's what it was then. Now I'm in a position where luckily... I've been able to, you know, make an honest living out of it, right? Make it a full-time thing. So I don't have the same financial struggles that that I had back then. So now it's how many people can I I help with reach their fitness goals, but also how many trainers can I teach how to do it as well? Because most trainers who quit on this thing, it's not because they don't have the love and the passion for it. It's that Mm -hmm. they don't understand how to take that love and take that passion and turn it into a business and make something of it for themselves. You know, most trainers have other jobs because they don't feel like they can make a full time living out of this, but it's a very specific way to do it. And it's less about how good of a workout plan you can write and more about how well you understand people, you know, how, how well you understand the psychology behind why somebody even needs to work with you in the first place, you know? So that's how I define success. Now it's, it's changed a little bit um, just because my circumstances have changed due to, you know, me putting the work in systematically. I got you. I got you. Now hit on a lot of good points. And again, you just, you know, keep saying things that my memory keeps flashing. And I just remember this day when I like really discovered that personal training was a sales job. Now, remember I'm going in just, 2017, you know, just lost weight. Somehow, some way it associates with be, becoming a personal trainer. I'm like, all right, well, since this is what the people are telling me that they want for me to do, all right, then here I am. And then, you know, maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months as I'm trying to get my my feel for as for the position. And I'm like, you know what? This is a sales job. And I never liked the sales job, you know, trying to sell somebody something that it's never really been a strong point for me. Uh And I guess when it comes to personal training, people have always kind of interpreted it as, oh, it should be free. Right. For some Uh for some odd reason. Right. I know you've been to that a thousand (laughs) times. So my question to you, when did you realize from when you first started personal training that, okay, this is a sales job or Mm -hmm. sales has to be a part of it. So let me rephrase that. It's not a sales job, but the the art of the sale, um, you have to now add that to your repertoire. Did you always know that? Or when was that aha moment for you? Absolutely. I was fortunate enough to realize it right away. And here's why. Because like you mentioned, when, when you walk into a personal training setting in the corporate world, it's not kumbaya. Right. I'm expecting like them to treat me like a teammate. 
the other yeah. trainers love you yes. and they want to show you. Yes. No, it's not that. You yeah. are looked at as competition as soon as you walk in. Yeah. So like you said, when I looked around, I realized, OK, there are people here mo- more certified than me, probably more you know, qualified, better shape, whatever the case may be. And they've been here already. They're already established. So my goal when I looked around was I'm like, OK, how do I stand out amongst these 30 trainers who are already here? who don't want me to be here because in their mind, I'm taking away from them, right? There's only so members, so, so many members to go around to sign on as clients. Exactly. exactly. So, so when I looked around, what I realized first was who the demographic was that was purchasing personal training. I realized right. that most of the people who were purchasing training were female between the ages of 28 and 50. So, mm-hmm. What I thought was, okay, I might not be able to out certification this dude. Yeah. I might not be able to out degree him or might not even write a better workout than him. But if the average client is female between the age of 28 and 50, what roles do they play outside of the gym? Right. Mm-hmm. So we got mothers, we got wives, we got business women, we got some people who have all of those roles. Right. So I started thinking, okay, with those roles, this demographic is essentially taking care of everybody else, right? From sun up to sundown, that's what they do. They, yeah. they are the ones who take care of everybody else. And because of that, they put themselves last, right? So yeah. I said, okay, I may or may not be able to write better workouts than, than these dudes. But what I know is that they're trying to get people to fall in love with push-ups, right? They want yeah. them to love it the way we love it. And, right, which, right, and as, right. you, as you know, that's not the case. That Ms. Jones yeah. will never love yeah. the push up the way we right. love exactly. the push up. Exactly. Exactly. And the other thing is, we can't necessarily control their results the way that we think we can, right? Exactly. The truth is, is if you don't adhere to the program, you're not getting the result no matter how good the program is. Yeah. So once I realized, okay, what do we have actual control of and what do we not have control of? I realized, like, okay. What I do have control of is providing a certain experience for this person that they can't duplicate on their own. Right. Yes. So while Ms. Jones may never fall in love with the push up, what she will fall in love with is the fact that I might be the only person who carefully listens and pays attention to yes. what it is that she wants. So yes. I would meet my clients at the front desk. Mm-hmm. Right. Instead of you've seen people. The, the client comes in for the first workout and they're nervous and they're looking all around for their trainer and they can't find the trainer and yes. they leave. Right. Yes. So I would yes. do things like that. Meet, meet my client at the front front desk. So the yeah. first person that they're seeing in this scary world of gym is yes. me. Right. And I'm yes. addressing them by name. So my point is, is I realized that it was a sales job, but it wasn't necessarily sales. Like, let me get you to buy this package and trick yeah. you into it. Yeah. It's, how can I change the word sell to help? And the first thing is, is if I can create an experience that she can't, she can't duplicate on her own, then that's going to make her want to continue to come back. Now, the more she comes back, naturally what happens is eventually over time, she's going to start getting results. Once right. she starts getting results, now the question then becomes, what more can I do? So mm-hmm. my position was, okay, if I can continue to provide an experience for these people, they're going to continue to want to come back for the experience alone because that part I can control. And if they continue to come back, then the physical result happens. And then it's, it's a, you know, it's a cycle, but that's how I did it. And I realized that immediately because like I said, I had rent to pay. So it's right, like, right. how do we, how do we, figure, how, do, how do we figure this out quickly? You know, and, quickly, quickly. And, and, and luckily the, the perception that we have on salespeople, because I'm just like you, like, I don't want to be a used car, car, car salesman. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And my solution to that was don't be. Just genuinely care about people. Like, yeah. I'm not selling you something that is not going to help you. I'm not pushing you into a contract that you can't afford. I'm here to meet you exactly where you are and help you get to where it is that, that you need to be. And for some people, Maybe that's eight sessions and that's all you can do right now. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. What can we accomplish? What habits can we build in those eight sessions that'll help you moving forward? And eventually you're either going to come back or 
you're going to tell people about the experience that you had with me. And it's a win either way. Before we talk more about experience, I just want to let you know these tips that and these jewels that you're giving out now. These were some of the same tips and jewels that you were giving out in Chicago and that resonated with me. And I remember some of my first clients, I would do that. I would meet them at the front desk and yep. people like the other trainers were kind of looking at me weird when I went there um, yep. to the front desk. And I'm like, well, you guys were at the same meeting I was at too. You know, I don't know what you <laughs> were paying attention to, hey. yeah. <laughs> but it made so much of a difference. It made so much of a difference of meeting them, you know, there and um, just providing them that that initial security, you know, versus having to walk around the gym wondering where I am or their trainer is or it may have you in that listening standpoint. I remember you talked more about listening, listening to what they say, listening to what that person is telling you about their fitness journey, their desires um, their goals and how it, how it, how it can fit into whatever, um, genius, mad, mad max plan I had in my head of a personal, uh, training for his workout and all that just fell out the window. Cause like you said, it's not about, Hey, you're going to love this bench press. Like how I love it. It's, it's, it's not that I remember, uh, my, my, my trainer at the time, my supervisor, he said, well, how would you, how would you initiate the conversation in regards to this tricep exercise um, for this client? I'm like, shoot, man, we about to superset. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, no, you're going to mm-hmm. do like 12 tricep breast downs and, and 12 curls. It was like, that's you, you're going too fast. And from that standpoint, your speech clicked in about listening and just taking your time with people. So everything that you're saying and what you say it, these jewels that I'm telling y'all, I listened to and I applied it. And it works. Now, when we're talking about the the customer experience or the, the client experience, how would you look out for or look for? What would you look for in a personal trainer as far as for you, you yourself? Like if you were looking for a personal trainer and how would that parallel for, let's say, the average clientele, female 28 to 50, what should they look out for um, in their in their quest to find a personal trainer? Yeah, that's a good question. I I will look for somebody who I believe has the ability to help solve my problems. Simple as that. I'll I'll take it off. I'll take it off training for, for, for a second. It's in any, in any need that you have that that's what you look for. I remember I hired a business coach, right. Mm -hmm. And I sat in his private Facebook group for two years. I didn't like a post. I didn't comment on a post. Because you know how it is. Sometimes if you like a post, now you become a lead and now you're getting messages. I don't want none of that. I was observing to see if the material that he was consistently putting out had the ability to solve the problems that I was having in my business at the time. After observing him for two years, I came to the decision that he he was consistently showing up, giving me information that I found helpful to solve the problems that I had. So when I finally hit him up, he had no clue who I was. He's going through his whole sales process. I'm, I'm like, look, I'm already sold. You know what I mean? And I paid him $10,000 for three months of coaching, right? Mm-hmm. The point is, is that it was him proving over time that he had the solutions to my specific problems. So same thing when you're looking for a trainer. I think that's first. Like, it's not necessarily about how good or bad his physique is. It's not necessarily about how fancy his videos are on the internet. It's when he's showing up and he's, you know, talking about what he can do. Does he, is he, is he not only giving you tips and information that you're finding helpful? And then is he showing social proof that, Hey, not only do I know what I'm talking about, but I've either done this for myself or I've done this for other people as well. And this is why I can do it for you. You know? So does he have the ability to meet you where you are? and help you get to where it is that, that you want to be. And has he shown that consistently, right? I think that's the first step. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, definite social proof. Um, and again, when I first started, you know, personal training again, like how you, I was always recording. I was recording way before I became a personal trainer It's just natural, you know, and you know, you, 
you get in boxes, right. You know, about, you know, personal training and, you know, can you do this, you know, blah, 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 or whatever. Then, you know, you're thinking that you got somebody, you know, on the hook. It's like, yeah, man, somebody's going to sign up. Cause like you said, Hey, rent is due. Hey man, I'm, you're already counting the money in your head or whatever like that. You know, don't ever do that. People don't ever do that. I mean, I'm counting, you know what I mean? I'm just so excited, right? So excited. And, uh, you know, you get an inbox. It's like, okay, you know what? They said they're going to sign up, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, they even go so far as filling the stuff out. But then the invoice is sent and then crickets. And you're just waiting, 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 waiting. You know, you follow up, you know, day one, day two, maybe week week one or week two. And then after a while, you're like, all right, you know, yep. that's not happening. Then uh-huh. a couple of weeks later, you may see them working out with somebody else. And in the beginning, I was like, well, how did you come to that decision? How did you come to that uh-huh. decision? And this person that they chose had none of those resources like how you just said and how uh-huh. I know I had. And that was always kind of driving me. I'm like, what is it? What was it? How did somebody come to that decision? to make on a personal training when there's no resources that I can just go, you know, go to. It's like, okay, you know, you, you know, maybe it was word of mouth, you know what I mean? And that's before I kind of like realized, you know, sometimes it's word of mouth. Sometimes your price may not fit their budget. How would, how did you, or how would you deal with that in the beginning stages of your career? I didn't take it personal, right? Like it was, and that's one thing that, that we, we, we hate rejection. Right. Yeah. We, we hate to feel like it's something about me that sucks. And that's why they didn't pick me. And sometimes it was me. Right. Sometimes yeah. maybe I was trying to push the sale too hard. And now they felt that in the conversation and now they feel like they're being sold instead of helped. Right. So but at the on, in other occasions and other scenarios, I realized that sometimes we just weren't a good fit and that's OK. All right. Right. When when I identified who my ideal client is, you know, and who I can help, what I learned is like that ended up being the clientele that that, that I built consistently. And, you know, that took time to get to that point, because in the beginning, I was just dude, anybody and everybody. Let's do it. Right. Right. I think think sometimes that's the problem when you're going after anybody and everybody. Right. You know, you're casting a wider net and it it puts you in position to get here no more because you're going after a bigger, you know, wider demographic. And I understood, like, I was going to get told no, because, dude, when I was showing people these prices, I couldn't afford it. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? So so, so it was hard for me to confidently even sell it. Because in my brain, it was like, shit, I, I can't afford this. So right. how can I expect them to? But that's what that's what you that was the message that I would convey because I knew I couldn't afford it. So I would be in a back and forth conversation. And once I presented price and it would get quiet, instead of me just letting them process and think, I would automatically try to discount it or automatically say, I can yeah. take, I can take money yeah. off. Da, da, da. Yeah. But what I've learned is that sometimes when that silence is happening, it's not them, you know, thinking about how expensive it is. That's me thinking about how expensive it is. They're just processing if it can work or not. Right. And so I just let them tell me at the, at at a point, you know, I don't bring up a payment plan if if they're not talking about it. Right. But what I've learned is after that silence, sometimes it's like, okay, well, do I have to pay the whole thing or can I do a payment plan or do I have to do this or that? then the conversation can happen. It's not a sale, but we're so scared of being told no that oftentimes we're told no because we get nervous and we make the scenario confusing and yes, more, yes, more, more pushy. Yeah. So, so we went from yeah. this confident trainer who I thought could yeah. help me, yeah. and now we're talking about price, yeah. and now you're being weird. You right, know, so right, right, um, right. that's what I learned along the way, man. It was like, yeah. you know, sometimes people just need a chance to process, process. And, right. and, and, and see if it's something that they could do. I, I'll never forget. I had a dude during Christmas time, he's sitting there and the silence happens and I'm, you know, going through price with them. And I, the 24 sessions was $1,296. I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. And he sat there after I presented price and it's quiet. And he's like, he's like, well, 
I guess I'm just going to take the TV back that I just bought for Christmas. It was $1,100, right? So mm-hmm. in his mind, while he's processing, he's thinking about what can he take away? What, what, what maybe he eat, goes out to eat less. In my mind, he's thinking, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. Right. But I just let him be, let him process. And yes. what, was, what, he, what he was doing was I see value in this. So yeah. what do I need to do to make it happen? Yeah. And I think that silence sometimes is important after you've truly, you know, done everything to show that you can help. Now yeah. the next step is just letting it be and see, you know, what happens next, you know, not, not forcing it, not being salesy. And I think a lot of that in the beginning was me wanting it so bad, but also not being one to be not wanting to hear no. And the combination yeah. of that was chaos. Yeah. Know? And that's, and that's, and that's telling just in life. I've noticed I've been doing that a lot more of let people process what you have said to them, what yep. you've asked of them. Everything does not need an instantaneous response. And especially yep. nowadays in the social media world where you put up one thing and everybody has an answer or response for it. Just like that. It's like, you didn't even process it. This post was posted five seconds ago and now you got a whole paragraph. Like, are you really sure that you processed what you saw or what you read? And I know I've been guilty of that. So what you just said is like, I know I've been guilty of it. Cause it's like, I don't want to be told no. Like, how can I make it better? How can I make this better for them? And it's just give them time or just give it time. And yep. if it does not work out, it just does not work out. So and, speaking of and, working out. And, 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 some, and sometimes it's, it, it means it's just not going to work out right now. Right now. Exactly. Exactly. You know? doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's definite. It's concrete because we've gotten that. We've gotten, hey, I'm going to hit you back in a week or a month. Right. And over time, now that hindsight is 2020, you've seen the 50-50 in that. You've seen the 50 of, oh, they really did honor their word. They did come back. And then you see the other 50 who didn't. And in both scenarios, time, time just told the truth about both situations. And it's like, okay, what do you do in between time? You kind of start to cycle up again or you keep you know, providing more, whether it's recording, whether it's recording this podcast, whether it's recording a workout tutorial or a meal prep tutorial or whatever, is just continue to keep doing you, you yep. know, refine where you need, but don't, don't, you don't necessarily have to refine just because one person told you no. Meanwhile, you got 10 clients already. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we can make these adjustments just for one no. You know, it's just like, you know, working out and it's like, all right, you know, what? I didn't like that particular exercise. Does it mean that I need to stop doing it? Not necessarily. Maybe you just need to, you know, maybe eliminate it or just reduce it. I was talking to my client earlier today and we were doing some tricep extensions and I didn't I, I didn't like the particular exercise that I was doing, but I haven't done it in so long. And sometimes uh-huh. it's like. Why don't you like it? It's like, oh, okay. I didn't like it because my elbows hurt, you know, as far as my joints, you know, but that's because when I did it prior, I was trying to put 45s on both sides every single time. Mm -hmm. No harm in putting some tens. You know what I mean? You can go heavy. You can go heavy on something else. You know what I mean? This, this one exercise does not define all, you know what I mean? This does not define all. And I think that's just a life lesson that we all have to learn when we, grow up is, you know, just time, you know, give some yeah. time. Give and and I think, I think, I think, to, I think to your point, you know, what are we doing in that time frame as well though? Right. Like we're not selling a product that people are lining up to like, we're, we're not selling beer or potato chips. Like if I was selling beer or potato chips, my job would be easier. Like, right? cause, cause, cause people come to the store for beer or potato chips. Like they want these things. So what I'm saying is, in most cases, if somebody says they're going to hit you back, it's not the first thing on their mind when they wake up in the morning, right? So Mm -hmm. my question often that I ask myself is, how do I stay on their mind in a genuine way? Like, okay, cool. It's no right now, but maybe there's a tip that I could send you in in a week or two that just helps you, right? And when I when we talk about following up, the follow up sometimes is so corny where it's like, 
hey, I'm just following up to see if you're ready to make a decision today and get started right away. And it's like, you sound salesy, right? You sound like you're trying to sell them something. Where the follow-up could simply be, hey, I saw you at the gym doing um, lat pull-downs. It's a great exercise for your back. Next time, though, try it with your chest up higher, your shoulders back, and relax your traps. See how you feel the difference in your back that time and let me know how it goes, right? Like it's it's helping them with something you saw them struggle with right. and then giving them a point to let us have a conversation again later. Now I have a reason to come back up and talk to you again later and say, right. hey, how, how'd those lap pull downs go? Right, how'd that adjustment go? Right, right, because people are always going to remind you. People are always, always going to remember how you made them feel. Exactly. You know, as opposed to solely what you said. It's like if you if what you if what you said made them feel a certain way, then yes, they will yeah. remember that. But um to your point, I just was flashing back. I seen this guy um bench pressing, uh maybe like last last month or so, super wide in his the weight I don't think he could handle, put it like that. And it was kind of just all over the place. And I said, Hey, you know what? You know, here are three pointers, you know what I mean? You know, feet back, arm width, you know? Yep. And um, it just makes me think about that. It wasn't a genuine thing. It wasn't like, I wasn't even really trying to sell it to him. I was just like, hey, I've been seeing you do the same crazy movements for the past three weeks. Hey, yep. you're going to hurt yourself. And I've yep. never really been a foreign police type of guy because it's like, you know what? Um, let me mind my own business, you know? Yep. But at that point, it had gotten way out of hand bro and i'm like all right bro just just stop you know you're doing all this yeah. yelling in the gym i'm looking over thinking that a squirrel got hit or something or ran over <laughs> listen do this you know because i yeah. and then on top on top of that before i even asked what is your goal you know like what are you trying to do because you may could be just trying to do half reps you may yeah. could i don't know yeah. and i think that's m- m- more important too it's like what are what are what are you going for are you trying to go for time and attention what are you going for it's like oh no i'm trying to bench press i'm like okay Listen, yep. all right, do this, do that, adjust that, and then you'll be all right, man. I just don't want to see you, you know what I mean? You just, fl- you know, flinging around or whatever. Yep. But I made a new friend at the gym. You know, now that I see him, say, hey, you understand what I'm saying? If anything, you understand yep. what I'm saying? If anything, and these these these, these little tips that, you know, because our eyes are always just open, you know, yep. to that, you know, and before we go adjust or ask somebody, hey, um, you need to do this, need to do that. Over time, like you had mentioned about, you know, sometimes we think we got this genius workout that we have. It's like, ask somebody, you know, what are you going for? You yep. know, that person may have an ailment. You know what I yep. mean? That person may just, and we've all had ailments too. You know what I mean? We'll do a quarter rep or a half rep. You know what I mean? Just yep. just trying to just do something. You know what I mean? We've exactly. battled through in, injuries and, and, and it's and those type of things that make me, be more empathetic with, yeah. you know, somebody. Cause it's like, okay, they may not just be doing half reps because they don't know how to do it. Maybe they're injured and they're just, you know, they're just trying at this point. Maybe they've been sitting on the sidelines for two months. And after a while, it's like, all right, let me stop. Let me stop yeah. baby. Let me stop. Yeah. Baby. And, and so, what you, what you said is so powerful though, because think about it. What if you build built, and I'm sure you already have built your reputation at the gym as the guy who just helps people, right? Like, like, like you said, you didn't do that with any intent on selling him something, but that's typically when it happens though, where it's like, dude, I'm genuinely trying to help you. Right. And now you build your reputation as the guy at our gym who genuinely wants to help. When people finally start thinking about making a decision to take the step to do personal training, you're who they think about. Right. And I think that that's the difference Yes, it's a sales job. However, when you change the word sell to help and you built your reputation as the guy who does that, now sales come because of your genuine intent to help people. Now, don't get me wrong. You do have to have a strategy involved as far as, you know, turning things over in the business. Like eventually you have to ask for the sale. Right. Yeah. But when you've done a good job at helping, 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 helping. By the time you ask for the sale, you've already built up so much credit, right? That they're yeah. like, yeah, yeah the point. I, I, I would love for you to help me, you know? Yeah, that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. Now, speaking about gyms and working out, 
what was your workout today? Now, being that Monday is chest day. So every Monday is chest day for anybody who doesn't know. But, you know, that's just something that eventually I picked up. I really don't honestly know when that started, where I got it from. I just knew Mondays is chest day and everything else is, you know what I mean? You just roll the dice or whatever, unless you got your own program. But um, what was your workout today since today is Monday? Who knows when I'll publish this, but today is Monday, chest day. Um, Did you hit chest or if not, what did you what did you do? Well, see, because Mondays are chess day for everybody else, it's impossible yeah. to get a bench <laughs> at my gym on Mondays. So yeah. I never hit chest on Mondays because of that reason. But but I used yeah. to. Um, yeah. But I always start Mondays out with a full body workout, believe it or not, because Good. I usually take uh, two days off on the weekend just to rest and recover. And Mondays are usually my day to just kind of reintroduce my body to the gym. I yeah. do a full body workout where it's not crazy heavy. It's like a, two sets on every muscle group. 12 to 20 reps. And, you know, it's a good way to set the tone for the week. And then I do chest tomorrow. Okay. Okay. And, um, and it's cool to switch up. It's cool to, you yep. know what I'm saying? Switch up your routine, you know, for a while, you know, I did, you know, chest on Mondays and then I switched. I'm like, you know what? I've been slacking on my legs. Let me just do legs on Monday. And it's yep. cool for y'all who's, who's listening. You know, it's not law. Monday is chest day. It's just, a, you know what I'm saying? Some gym bro stuff. Yeah. Just, Whatever you can make it, whatever you understand what I'm saying. You, yep. every, every single day you can you can make it. Um, you know, as as just, just whatever. Yeah, yep. just 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 show up too. Yep. And that's another thing in regards to you know clients and you know as far as gym life or gym culture. In this day and age, and you know as as we get older and we go through life and life starts life and where there's bills, there's rent, you know, family members, um, just stuff happen. It is a lot. It takes a lot for people to get to the gym. It takes a lot for me to get to the gym and I have a home gym. <laughs> I can just go downstairs. <laughs> it takes a lot. I mean, like, even when you have a home gym, it takes a lot. And it's just, you know, it is your mental. So when somebody does show up, it is, it's not so much, you know, a participation award. I don't never necessarily look at it solely like that. It's that man, just life starts life. And then if somebody can just consistently dedicate themselves to come in um, one every day, that's a plus, but then to come in at a certain time every single day, that's just a plus, you know what I mean? And you get in there um, and you knock out, you know, your, your workout and you do what you can. And then when you leave, you, you feel a lot, you feel a lot better. Now with that being said, how long, how long is your gym sessions now? And do you solely look at it as time length? I know you're a, you're a businessman and, 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 and a busy man. Do you have to try to, you know, squish it in, you know what I'm saying? The certain hours or how does that go for you? Yep. So my session typically lasts about an hour, right? I don't, I'm not in there much longer than an hour, hour and a half tops, but um, my sessions are very productive, meaning like I'm not doing a lot of uh, talking and hanging out and texting and scrolling. Like, like you said, I'm just like everybody else. My session is my time to not only get better physically, but it is my time away from everything else. You know what I mean? So I take pride in like truly getting in there and getting after it, you know, and don't get me wrong. If somebody comes up and says, what's up, I will, you know, engage. Right. But for the most part, when I'm in there, I'm, I'm getting it done. So I feel like anything over an hour and a half for me, and this is like including cardio that is, is too long. So hour, hour and a half. Okay. Hour, hour and a half. And would you recommend that time link for somebody just starting the hour um, workout or how would you start somebody off when they're first, you know, brand newbie to the gym? You know, what's the time frame far as for the sessions that you would give them? That's a good question. I think that, I think the name of the game is getting in there where where you can fit it in. Right. Like I have clients that I'll do 30 minute sessions with. Right. But the, the the reality is, is like you said, you have all these different things pulling at you day to day. And yeah. I know that the better physical shape you're in, the better you're going to be at those things anyway. You'll be a better father. You'll be a better mother. You'll be a better significant other. Right. So all the things that you are responsible for, if you get better physically, you'll get better at those. And a lot of people say, well, I don't have time to work out. It's. You're looking at it as I got to be in the gym for two hours. 
right? If you can only get in 30 minutes, then let it be that. But if it's a focused, productive 30 minutes, then I'll take that over no minutes at all, you know? So, and it's the same thing where I'll write a client, a workout program, and let's say they thought they had an hour and turns out they don't. Okay, well, we'll adjust it to 30 right. minutes. But I, I think that that's better than skipping, you know? So Definitely. to answer that question, my answer is it depends, right? It depends on how much time you actually do have. And, you know, I think it's more about being consistent than a certain amount of time. You know, if you can 100%. get an hour, it's productive. Because because I know people, I have friends who be in the gym for five hours. Mm-hmm. And did you really was you was you really in there working out for five hours or yeah yeah were you just in there you know so right maybe it's a power lift you know do a you know heavy weight and then take a half hour break <laughs> you know what i mean in between um but it makes sense for that sport yeah, though yeah you know? yeah 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 i don't necessarily like working out that way but sometimes like today i did rack presses or pin presses and i was going heavy and just the amount of time I was spending in between sets, climbing up, I just felt like so guilty of just sitting there. You know what I mean? I didn't really want to superset. You know what I mean? It's like it was that, that yep. itch, especially if you're used to a certain type of tempo. Like I like my heart rate to be at anywhere between 110 to like 125 when I'm weight training. That's as far as yep. me. Some of it has to do with cardio before weights. That's what I personally prefer. Um, because I know if I wait to afterwards, it ain't going to get done, ain't you know? It, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody has a, um, you know, a different pace. And when we're talking about time, even, you know, to a newbie, if it's, hey, you know, a 30 minute session or even a 45 minute session, even a 60 minute session. And maybe it's me. Maybe it's because, you know, we've been doing this for so long or this is just what we've been doing prior to the title personal trainer. That time goes by so fast and yep. I'm pretty sure you've experienced that with, you know, newbie clients and it's, they're nervous. And then, you know, they come in, they start the session and, you know, prior to the session, you know, they're talking about time. Oh, this is going to take a long time or, you know, just whatever, whatever it is that we all have, you see them have it too, where they kind of psych themselves out of it. And then when it's done, it's like, Oh, it's done. It's like, yeah, that was a half hour. You know what I mean? And just yep. that, yep. like you said, that help. And it's like, you know what? You help them realize it ain't that bad. You know, you help yep. them realize it ain't that bad. Now, still staying with the uh, client class customer, um, this is something that I've tried to figure out, and maybe you can help me and help ever, everybody else with this. This question I wrote, you know, why and or how is personal training immediately associated as weight loss only first, but strength training gets set to the side? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. I think it's the per, like like when you think about getting in shape, right? Yeah. Most people think about how much can I get this scale to go down, right? right? So the misconception is if I lift weights, I'm going to get bulky, right? And yes. <laughs> and the and the misconception in addition to that is uh, muscle weighs more than fat. So what I want to do is I want to, since I want the scale to go down, I want to eat as little as possible and I want to do as much cardio as possible because Mm -hmm. all I care about is this number on the scale going down. When the reality is, is there's a difference between fat loss and weight loss, right? Yeah. If you, if you only care about that scale going down, let's starve you to death and let's put you on endless amounts of cardio. The scale can go down. However, when you only focus on weight loss, have you ever seen somebody lose a dramatic amount of weight and when they get down to whatever the goal weight is, they just look like a smaller version of what they looked like at their heaviest weight because they didn't pay attention to mitigating muscle loss, right? So when you strength train with the process, you may not be able to build a significant amount of muscle but you can mitigate muscle loss by lifting weights. When Mm -hmm. you have more lean muscle tissue, what happens is you burn more calories, not just overall, but also at rest, right? If I can get more lean muscle on you, 
you burning calories just doing what me and you doing right here, right now. Right, right, right. People don't people don't understand the science behind it. And I think trainers are responsible for this too, because we put so much emphasis on what that scale does that we we make a person feel like they're either succeeding or failing based off of that number. When the truth is, is if I can change your body composition and you, the, the weight might not change that much depending on the scenario, but I can show you a picture of a client right now before and after where they've lost 10 pounds. And if I ask you how much you think that they lost, you, you'll say 50 because the composition from muscle to fat has changed. And it's not just about get that scale down, get that scale down. It's I want to add lean muscle tissue to you. One, so you look better, you feel better. And from a longevity standpoint, it keeps you in the game to do it longer. Excellent. 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 Because that's always kind of just been a eyebrow raise for me when it, you know, you get inquiries, you get people inboxing you and yes, they do want to get, you know, in shape and they immediately associate in shape solely with, with weight loss, right? Solely with, solely with weight loss. Um, and it's like, lifting weights is like, it just goes out of their mind. And in my head, I'm just like, well, how am I trying to say this nicely? Get a nutritionist. You know what I mean? I don't, don't want to say it. Don't, I don't want to say it. You know what I'm saying? That way. Um, but it's already been said out out there, but it's, it's always kind of just been a thing to me. I'm like, how is it? How did people start just associating, you know what I'm saying? Personal training just solely yeah. just with weight loss and you know, truth of the matter is the definition, um, you know, in the certifications is, you know, we are, you know, trained fires from lifting weights. Now there are some aspects of certifications where nutrition is involved diet, you know what I mean? Certification is involved, but truth of the matter is it's, it's first, you do have to get your personal training certification first, then it goes to nutrition. Now I can understand you know, the assumption and the correlation of the two, but not everybody is certified, you know, in both. So as a, as a personal trainer, what is your take on um, those who are certified in both and those who are certified in, let's say either, either, or so let's say the nutrition part is, let's say not certified. They're just strictly, Hey, I'm just here to help you um, gain strength. Yeah. I, I think, Certification or not, you is our responsibility to have some knowledge of the basics, right? Right. Like basics. Like yep. if you're not certified in it, maybe you shouldn't be writing a meal plan because that then, then that that makes you liable. But yeah. you know, it's responsible for us to understand the benefits of our clients consuming a certain amount of protein and being able to True. educate them on. True. how valuable that is to the process, you know? True. So um, I think there's a fine line between, you know, you don't have to write a meal plan, but right. if Ms. Jones is constantly coming to you and she's super sore after the great workout you put her through, you should right. be able to tell her the difference between like, okay, well, the reason you're sore is because in the gym, we're breaking the muscle down. So Correct. what needs to happen after the gym is fast digesting protein, fast digesting carb, and that's going to help you, start the recovery process. So now you'll be less sore next time. The harder you can go next time, the better the results, right? So like little basics, you know, it's, I think it's necessary for us to understand so we can educate our people. Yes. Um, I think sometimes we, we use the, the, the rule in the industry of like, well, if I'm not a nutritionist, then I can't write, write a plan. True. But that doesn't give us, the right not to be able to educate them on the basics of, right. you know, why right. I'm telling you McDonald's is not the, the route. And if you do end up at a McDonald's, here's how you navigate. And I'm not advocating McDonald's by any means, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, you yeah, get yeah, my yeah. point. Like, yeah. as a trainer, it's my responsibility to help you fill in the gaps, you know, and I don't have to write you a meal plan in order for me to say, okay, if you want to be 150 pounds, then it's going to benefit you to be getting one gram per pound of your ideal goal weight. And here's why, you know? Right. So, 
so, so that's my take. I think some tra- trainers by nature, I feel like we are kind of lazy and we want to be good at the parts we're good at. Right. right. Like right. we like the weightlifting part. So yeah. that's what that's the part we want to always right. do. But right. in order for them to get the best results possible, then we have to be able to educate them on at least the basic. And most people just need to know the basics. Like yeah, just the basics. Is how fine. much water they should be drinking. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how much water should, should they be drinking? How much protein should they be consuming? How much right. should they be moving daily? Right. Stuff yeah. like that. And I think I think you don't need a certification to give that information safely. Yeah, 100 percent. I've noticed when I started really, you know, diving deep down into protein and the benefits of protein and the benefits of protein in the aging population. Um, My average clientele is um, women 40 and up, you know, and, you know, they're introducing themselves to strength training. And like you said in the beginning, it's okay. now I spent so much of my time and years on my family, my husband, my kids, and, you know, everybody else. Now it's my me time. And it's like, okay, you know, now you're introducing yourself to weight training and, you know, you know, you're trying to do, do you. And I was like, okay, you know, you go down this rabbit hole of these protein studies and the benefits of the quality of life towards the end of life. It's not necessarily saying that it's going to extend life. It's just the quality of life, your ability to stand up and just, you know, uh, go to the restroom on your own without, you know what I'm saying? So much assistance, you know, uh, excluding certain genetic, you know, things or whatever yep. like that. And I've noticed by them just increasing their protein, it, it, it really kind of by default almost forces the bad out to an extent. And you can yep. just see the two pound increments or three pound increments, whether it's actually weight loss on the scale or just yep. simply increasing muscle mass. Therefore, you know what I mean? Pretty much yep. squeezing all the, you know what I'm saying, the bad stuff out. And it's not as complicated as yep. I would have thought it would have been, or even they would have thought it'd been. It's like, okay, only thing I have to just, you know what I'm saying, eat this or eat yep. more of this, you know, by by that, you're gonna be more satiated. Um, you're gonna feel better, uh, skin, hair, nails, all these, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, benefits when it when it comes to that, when it comes to just you- simply increasing protein. You just you just made such a powerful point that most trainers like really look past, right? Like when mm-hmm. when somebody comes to you initially, it's natural to think, all right, what foods do I need to eliminate? Right. But you just said it perfectly. Sometimes in most cases, I don't tell people to get rid of anything right away. I say, add this amount of protein, right? Like add mm-hmm. this amount of this amount of protein per meal. And eat the protein first. And like you said, what naturally starts to happen is they find themselves more satiated and it naturally they don't want to eat as much of the bad. Right. So instead of putting that mental pressure and saying, get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of this. We start with protein this amount. And like you said, the bad naturally rids itself because we ate the protein first. So, damn, I'm I'm also full And they start to see how it's benefiting their results. So now, like we talked about earlier, what more can I do? Right. I think sometimes we 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 take away so much initially. And you got to think if somebody been doing something a certain way for 30 years. Right. Right. And now you want them to change everything right right now. Right. Why they fail because they can't keep it up. So if you habit stack, it's one thing at a time. All right. Let's add this amount of protein. All right, now let's add this amount of water. Right. Okay, right. now let's add this amount of movement. Mm-hmm. And now their confidence starts to build yeah. because they believe they can do it now. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, says so you gotta gotta stair step it, man. And that yep. is a part of just learning, just learning, learning more so yourself as a trainer. Um, your patience, you know, yep. your it's like, you know, my grandmother uh had this had to say my grandma, grandmother, um, Maybe it's me. You know, I had to start really reflecting in the last two years. It's like, maybe I'm saying something wrong. Maybe I'm articulating it wrong. There's been plenty of times to when I am trying to direct a client to execute said move. And part of my head is like, why don't they get it? Why don't they get it? And it's like, 
maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not articulating the right way, or maybe I'm not putting it in a way from uh, one simpler or two their language. And you understand yep. what I'm saying? You can yep. talk to a client for so long and it's like, okay, they kind of talk like this or a reference of a movie or a TV show or sports, yep. something creative. And I've learned that and it's helped me with just with patience, going back to what you said earlier about um, just giving people time to just process and process. Yep. And that is one of the major lessons that I'm thankful for because it's still human to human interaction and communication. And so with that being said, as we land a plan here, what is one or some of the biggest lessons that you've learned um, in personal training as far as from clients, just your interaction, whether it's be with clients or, you know, people, because now, you know, yeah. you train personal trainers. So I guess clients is <laughs> clients yeah, is more yeah. broad for you than it is yep. as far as for me. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, even to answering your question, going back to the, the, the last statement you made, that I feel like the answer is w w within that, right? Like mm -hmm. communication sometimes is a, and most times it's a step-by-step -step thing. And us as trainers, most of us are very driven people where we want the end result and we want it now because we've helped people do it before. So we know we can do it again. And if we go back to your example of when you say, maybe it's me, maybe I'm saying it wrong. I think a lot of times it's I see 29 things wrong with your squat. And the problem mm -hmm. is I tell you all 29 things wrong with it right yeah. now. And yeah. because I threw 29 cues at you, guess how many got fixed? Zero. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. So, yep. so, so from a patient standpoint, patience isn't necessarily what I can tolerate in this, in this setting. Patience is more about, okay, there's 29 things wrong with this squat. I got to be okay with 28 things being wrong and one thing being fixed. Right. 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 Because right. I know eventually once this one thing gets fixed, now I can fix the second thing. Now, right. now only 27 things are wrong. You see right. what I'm saying? Right. 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 And I think that's the, that's the part that a trainer struggle with because we're so knowledgeable of what needs to be fixed right. that we don't consider that this is a foreign language to them. Yes. So yes, we, yes, yes, we, yes. We, we, we hit them with all the things that need to be <laughs> <Yeah>. fixed. <laughs> yeah. And we wonder why they aren't progressing. It's because, well, you threw 30 things at me that I've, that I've haven't done in 30 years. And I've right. tried to fix everything that you said. Right. Right. And this is what I came up with. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Right. It's right. like you ever demonstrated a squat perfectly and you give all these cues and then they do it. And you're like, it's not what I said, right? <laughs> because right. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we yeah. gave them too much at once. So I think what, what I learned is, is meeting people where they are is the key to helping them get to where it is that they need to be. And it's not a one size fits all thing, you know? Foundationally, I think there are things that, you know, we all understand, but after that, <laughs> it's different for everybody. So if you truly want to help people, and, and this is, dude, when I'm mentoring coaches how to be better coaches, you'd be surprised what the conversation is about. It's very little about, well, you wouldn't be surprised because you get it, but it's very little about sets and reps, like, because we can all do that. Right. It's more about understanding people and then how to make it a business, right? Like, most trainers are like, dude, I can write the best workout plans. And I don't know why people don't want to work with me. Well, that mm -hmm. part is expected. When you hire a personal right. trainer, they expect you to be able to write a good workout plan, right? right? That's not why they sign up with you. And it's if you can really understand what somebody wants and more importantly, why they want it, that's what's going to keep them going because eventually the motivation wears off. Right. Eventually the excitement yeah. wears off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. at that point, if you're banking on being the trainer that's saying, good job, you can do it, I believe in you, and thinking that's going to be enough to get them moving forward when they don't want to, it's not. So you have to, in the beginning, figure out what they want to do, more importantly, why they want to do it. What's in it for them? You want to lose right. 50 pounds? Great. 
How does your life change 50 pounds lighter? Right. What's going to change in life for you if you're 50 pounds lighter? What what are you going to be able to do 50 pounds lighter that that you can't do right now? Right. 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 And then when they why when they aren't adhering, when they aren't adhering to the program. Now, this is what I'm bringing up. Yeah. Okay, Miss Jones, in the beginning, you said you didn't want to cut playtime short with the kids anymore because it was embarrassing because your cardio. Is that not important to you anymore? Yeah. Yeah. How it is. Well, if it is, let's get back going. You know, something that's meaningful to them, because, again, like we talked about, they will never love the push up as much as we love the push up. Right. But what they do love is what that means to them. How does the push up help me get where I want to be, Mike? Help me understand that. And the process is a game of con- continuing to remind them of how what we're doing helps them get to where it is that they want to be, whatever their why is. And this is why Mike Trotter is the PT boss. This is my Yoda, my, 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 my Obi-Wan. Hopefully I don't turn into uh, Darth Vader, but right now I'm still at the, I'm st- right, right now I'm still at the, 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 the Anakin phase episode one, but this is, this has been a long time coming. This was always like a, a dream of mine to do something with you ever since I saw you in 2017 in Chicago and just taking that chance. Like you said, you know, taking that chance is like, hey, you know what? I was supposed to be on lunch, but this is what I'm doing. That's that passion, that drive. And I appreciate you taking your time out of your day to come on the Success Fitness Podcast. Tell everyone where they can reach you at if they want to connect with you. Um, it's all the same. Uh, the, the PT boss on Instagram and the PT boss official on TikTok. And for anybody who might be a trainer out there, we, we are actually, you know, all these things that we just went over, we're, we're actually doing a personal training seminar here in Bloomington, Illinois, um, August 16th, August 17th. And it'll be a two day seminar where we're going to get in depth on these things that, that, that you and I just went through today. So if it's something that you find value in, whether you're a trainer already or you're an aspiring trainer and looking to figure out where to start, that's what we're really putting energy into right, right now. How do we help this industry continue to get better? And it starts with the trainer. If the trainer can get better, then the trainer can help other people get better. And then it's a never ending cycle of good. And that's my goal from here on out to focus on that. For sure. For sure. For sure. I will have all of the PT bosses information down in the description box and this brings us to the end of another episode of the success fitness podcast please sign up to my weekly newsletter the success fitness newsletter all that information will be down in the description box just as well you can also join my facebook community the success fitness family over there on facebook we post meal prep videos meal prep um um tutorial funny stuff. You know, we take it very, very light over there. Fitness does not have to be so serious that some social media sects have made it out to be. But over here at Success Fitness Family, we make it fun. We make it fun. So the link to sign up to the Success Fitness newsletter will be in the description. Thank you for listening to the Success Fitness podcast. And remember this, if it's not making you stronger, simply chant more weight, more weight, more weight. Peace out. Thanks for having me, bro.